Hey guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Seething Hatred. Seething Hatred is a talent that while at 10 stacks of hatred, you gain 15 spell power. Basic attacks grant two stacks of hatred so you can get the full stacks in five auto attacks. This talent has been buffed uh, quite a while back and it's still a pretty debated topic. I've talked about it being very valuable in Q build because Q build you do a lot of spell damage. Uh, particularly, you will do a Hungering Arrow into a Vault. Vault level 7 Repeating Arrow allows you to reset Hungering Arrow. You fire another Hungering Arrow and then a multi shot. You combine all of that, and adding an extra 15% damage could be the difference of getting a kill or not getting a kill. I also really like. Uh, running strafe in that particular build while you don't get the hundred to zero as easily You get a lot more sustained damage throughout the fight and you can almost hundred to zero by just taking seething, seething hatred and landing that uh, that Q E Q W combo um, The problem I find with seething hatred is getting that first five auto attacks uh, you're going to notice a lot of the fights, I usually combo first and then auto attack second, meaning that you don't really get that value. Which is why I consider this talent a little bit more of a win more, where if you're already winning and you're constantly auto attacking the enemies, then you get that extra spell power and it's really valuable. You'll notice that when we're sieging, this talent gets a lot of value, but when we're not sieging, this talent is almost a dead talent throughout almost all of the fights. So if you're already winning, then it's a really great talent. With that being said, I want to talk a little bit about Vault in the Q build, as well as Seething Hatred in the Q build. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So let's uh, let's get into it. Level 1, uh, you're going to be taking Monster Hunter on Battlefield of Eternity. The, the basic idea of Monster Hunter is you want to be doing increased damage to monsters, um, which is all of the objectives are considered monsters. Then at level 4, uh, you're going to be taking Puncturing Arrow to increase that base damage. So remember that this is base damage increase, which then gets increased further when you're attacking monsters. So this, this quest can get done really... Or it, can, it can add a lot of value. Also, this damage is increased by... Man, or not Man's Gore, but by Seething Hatred. So if you have that extra quest done... Um, remember, it's going to increase your damage by 100 and then an extra 75 when you're done. Um, and it bounces one more time. And because it already bounces two additional times, that means that it's going to bounce three times. So if you catch one person out of position and you do a QEQ, -E um, that effectively is going to like triple your damage. Then if it's going to triple your damage, you add Seething Hatred onto it and that's going to increase the damage by another 15% on top. So it's really powerful. Now, the one thing that Seething Hatred doesn't really do as much as people think is increase your race. That 15% actually competes differently with Monster Hunter. So instead of it being 15% and then of 150% extra, uh, which would make it an extra 22.5%, which would be pretty good, it actually only adds 15% on top of the 150%, so it goes up to 165% making it not even worth the initial 15%. Um, what it actually ends up equaling, if we were to show how the math works on this, let me pull out the calculator. Um, this is how the math works on it. Uh, it'll go from 150 to, um, and we're going to divide, sorry, it's going to go up to 165, which we divide by 150 to see how much it improves. And it only improves by 1, which would be 10%. But that's not even what it actually is, because this is 150% more damage. It's actually 2.5, uh, but it's actually going to be 2.65 because of the buff. And then again, it's going to be divided by 2.5, which means it's actually only 6%. So... As far as a race increase, this only increases the, the race potential of your Q by 6%. It increases the race potential of your W by 15%, but that's not actually going to be that valuable to the objective because the majority of your damage is going to be around your Q. Making Seething Hatred not really worth it to take as far as a 
race increase. However, having it increase the damage against heroes is still viable, and it does still scale really well with Puncturing Arrow, because that increases your base damage, and this increases your percentage damage. So, um, that it's still a good talent, but I just wanted to share that with anyone in the video that says, oh, well, it's good for increasing your race. It doesn't really increase your race that much. Um, it's not bad, but generally, if you're going to take a level 16 talent, you want it to be like a... 15 to 35 percent increase in value on usually when it's on a single ability you want it to be like a 30 percent increase when it's on like all of your abilities you generally want it to be like a 15 to 25 percent increase um so for being something that's only inc improved the race of really one ability by six percent is a really bad level 16 talent so that's why we don't really we're not going to consider this as a race talent we're not even going to talk about it i mean the one thing that it does sort of is it does stack your hatred faster but that's not going to increase your race too much um, because you're still going to be able to stack it up rather quickly that being said i do end up going over here i ping that i'm on my way but my team doesn't end up following and i end up having to back so my goal is pretty much just kill one of these dogs and then i can back um but with my team ended up showing up a little late i i don't end up backing i just wait until my team shows up and then i will finish it off so level 4, I do take Puncturing Arrow. One of my biggest challenges on this map is when you take this talent is right about when the boss, or when the objective spawns. So if this talent was at level 1, you'd probably be able to get like 5 to 10 stacks before the objective spawns. But being at level 4, it actually gets really difficult to stack. Uh, so stacking this talent is definitely going to be a really big deal if you're playing as Vala or against Vala. Uh, stacking this talent's definitely going to show... Not, not necessarily the good Vala's versus the bad, because a good team going against you is going to prevent you from stacking this. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, it's definitely going to be your your way of scaling further in this game, because this build doesn't really scale so well in the late game. It doesn't scale terribly, it just doesn't scale as well as like the hyper carry build does. So with all of that being said, your goal in these objectives is to race. Um, you want to still join your team for fights. This is something that a lot of Valas forget about. So you definitely still want to be joining your team. Stutter stepping is something that you want to get good at. I generally don't do it too often on Vala when I'm already in range to attack, but it's something you can definitely work on. Uh, then I go back to racing. Right as we realize that I'm not going to have to deal with enemies, I just go right back to racing. Uh, you generally want to try to save your E for when you're actually going to use a Q reset. Um, in this particular case, we get attacked by two people here. Uh, I'm going to use my E to get out. The problem was is I used my E right as I got rooted. So either a really good play on Thrall's part or just a mistake on mine that I should have used my E earlier. We'll fast forward through my death. But overall, uh, it's pretty straightforward. A lot of people know how to do this Vala on this map. Um, it's it's kind of straightforward. You, you use your Q. It's a lot of damage. You use your E to reset your Q and you fire off another Q. If you ever want to get like really aggressive with fights, that's the big thing that can set the good volleys from the bad. And this is actually something that can, is knowing when you can 100 to 0 a target and knowing when you can't. And then when you can, knowing that you can do that quickly and taking them out. Right here, I'm just trying to get stacks on Q. So I got two free stacks on Q. I could try to go for a kill here, but most likely I just get slapped and killed. So I take a step back because I'm not too concerned about actually going for something there. I'm more concerned about seeing if I can get value in another area. Oh, let me turn off my fan. This is probably probably being picked up on the recording. I've got a uh, an ionizer. If you guys haven't heard of an ionizer, it's actually a real thing. Um, I'll talk about it in another video because I've been doing some research on ionizers and how they affect reaction time. If they ref affect reaction time. And so, see if it's even, like, if it, if it is something that can improve gaming. I know it sounds silly, but it, I mean, potentially could be. Because it does affect your uh, productivity, or not productivity. There's a, there's a, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll, I'll actually do a dedicated video on it if it's something that's relevant. If it's not, then you guys don't need to worry about it. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, right now, again, I'm just trying to stack puncturing i could go down here and probably rip a camp very quickly once you get repeating arrow you can do about half of a camp's health in one go so keep that in mind if you ever decide that you want to like quickly rip a camp you can do about half uh and then to get the other half you're gonna have to wait 10 seconds 
Uh, so we go for just a little bit of damage there. I take a lot. I take a step back. I could back here, or I could go straight up to the objective. I decide to back. Now I can go over to the camp if I want to go for that first, or I can go to the objective. Either one works. I, I don't think I... I remember in this situation, I couldn't really remember, because the camp spawned like three seconds before the objective, but... Um, Generally, when I, I use a, a QEQ, I like to E down to the side, so I stay at the same range. But because we were getting charged, I decided to Q E, e backwards and then just use my next Q onto her. And you always kind of want to step back in between attacks because you don't really want to get hit by too much stuff here. I want to avoid any of the blinds. I want to avoid the stuns. And I tell my team to simply back out once the fight starts getting a little sour and when the enemies are level 10s. Because I want to make sure that we can get to level 10. So you saw all those retreat pings. You'll notice that when, when the pings are on my way, I usually will just do like two. But when the pings are a treat ping, I'll do like four or five. Uh, now we get to level 10. Now, I usually like to go Reign of Vengeance just because you can do the QEQ, Reign of Vengeance W, or WQEQ, uh, or sorry, yeah, WQEQ, R, or sorry, R, QEQ, uh, and I died there, but... Um, they, they were kind of focusing me a little bit, which is fine. Uh, I am Vala. It's not that I'm a streamer. It's that you should kill Vala. She's got a low range, so if you get the opportunity, go for it. Um, but yeah, it, normally it's it's R, Q, E, Q, W, R. It is if you want the 100 0 when you're running Reign of Vengeance. Um, but I've been running Strafe a little bit more in the Q build because it gives just a little bit more teamfight potential. So it's definitely something that you guys might want to try out. And I think that's how I'm going to be naming this video is, uh, is Strafe in Q build. I like it because it's a mage build. Um, and in between your QEQW, there's nothing to do for a short period of time. So it gives you something to do rather than just auto attack. Because um, if you go the other build, you're just auto attacking, but you didn't take any of the auto attack talents. So you're auto attacking is kind of a waste of time the only benefit to auto attacking is uh if you can yeah like right here i just pop strafe and i just go straight for her while also still being able to win the race but they they start going for me and i start telling my team i'm like okay if we just peel uh they're gonna always try to kill me and these fights start getting really easy after i say that is that we just kill their their divers almost every fight So I just joined my team. You can see I back as we win almost every one of the objectives because I can get back to the objective with full health and full mana um, right as the objective gets there. So just notice that that's something that I do almost every time that we win an objective. If I was Diablo, I would be coming back at about the same time and I'd have full mana where he's at half or he's at less than half. Um, same thing here, Stukov, half mana, he could be at full mana. If there's ever an objective that takes a long time to spawn, like an Immortal or on Tomb of the Spider Queen, or really anything like that, those are the the objectives that you want to be backing while you're waiting um, for them to spawn. Right here, you see that I'm auto-attacking and taking steps back because I don't know where the enemies are, and I want to just be unpredictable. So, Stutter Step. Um, you can try to keep your hatred going a little bit longer by, like, uh, auto attacking getting closer to the enemy minions so that you can auto attack one of the enemy minions when you get there um, I just do a quick W when they show up I'm actually gonna get stunned here because I didn't even notice it um, and then I'm just trying to destroy the front wall so that Artanis can get back once Artanis is dead I'm it's kind of one of those times where you, you just want to walk away if you can um, I don't think it's really worth it to try and to fight too much here since we're down someone and we also have someone that's bot lane. Our medieval is simply bot lane right now. Not really sure what he's doing down bot lane, but he is bot lane. Medivh doesn't really have a lot of siege. That's the only reason that I mentioned that. Um, so again, I'm using my Q and then I'm using an E and then a Q again. I try to use my ult to just do some damage and zone them away from the Diablo that's getting rather low. Uh, then I'll just hit a, a fountain. So you see the strafes that I'm using generally right now are to just weaken everyone. And that's one of the reasons why I like it is it's it's a lot of like weakening damage. Even if you can't 100 to 0 someone, it's like, oh, this is nice to just get them a little lower. So where Reign of Vengeance is a little win more, because if you have enough damage to 100 to 0 someone, it guarantees that. And if you don't, then it kind of feels like a dead town unless you need to interrupt something. Where strafe is good whether you're ahead or behind just because it's extra damage. Um, and it's in between your combo anyways, so it's not like you were going to be doing anything anyways. Then level 16 is where Seething Hatred comes in, and honestly, I'm still on the fence. What it competes with is Manticore, which then gives you a reason to attack. So that's why I say, if you're going to take Strafe, 
you, you have to take seething hatred and if you're gonna take seething hatred you have to take strength um, because if you're gonna have time to auto attack, you want to give yourself more time to auto attack, which is the lower cast time, um, and that's when Manticore gets better. But if you're not gonna have time to auto attack, um, then I think it would be better to to take uh, Seething Hatred. So I definitely think these talents should go together, but it really comes down to like how well they should go together. So in this case, I decided I wanted to go for the camp, but then uh, the objective was spawning in like eight seconds, and I was like, okay, well maybe I don't go for the camp first. Maybe I just sit here for the uh, the objective because you do a ton of race. If you can get like a QEQ -E -Q off, so like watch this uh, race. So I get the Q, I get an E, I get a Q off, I get a W off, and I mean this thing's already shredded, twenty five percent of its health. I just move out of the way. Nothing too crazy. I don't want to get hit by. Uh, by her so you see that every time i see may step up i'm always walking away uh i do so right here i, I strafe over the wall remember that strafe gets um uh, it, it gets blocked by minions or heroes but it doesn't get blocked by walls so if you saw what i did right there i did a qeq and then i did a w doing about half of her health and then i just immediately pop strafe allowing me to continue the damage i deal without just standing still the other cool part about this is I get to deal damage to both of these heroes at the same time, and this is going to do a lot more than if I would have just stood still and auto-attacked. Um, remember that this does 100 damage per hit, but it hits multiple times per second. You see how many times it's hitting per second? So now I get to also follow this uh, this Ana, and I move faster than her because of uh, the hatred, allowing giving me some extra movement speed. So it allows me not only, and I cannot believe I did that, I did a QEQ W on something on an immortal that already went to halftime show. Um, but yeah, so you guys could kind of see how I was able to take out two different people by going this strafe talent instead of just going uh, the, the rain of engines. So it definitely, I, I really like Q build with rain. And since they've buffed seething, I do feel like this build is just a teeny bit better um, than going the, the old version of the build. So same thing. We race really well. I need to get a little bit of my mana back. We could go top and try to end, or we could go with the objective and try to end. Either way is, is the correct call, but we need to do it together. So if my team's not going to go bottom, I need to go with them. If my team would listen and go bottom, we would likely win with that. But either way, you want to be with your team. So right here, again, this is where the problem with Seething Hatred comes in. I do my full combo, and we get a kill, but we get a kill without any hatred. Which is why it's a tricky talent to want to recommend to people because you need to get those five auto attacks off first, which is pretty rare. So try to hit them on like, try to not, if you've got a Vala on your team, try not to destroy sidewalls so that the Vala can at least auto attack a sidewall five times and then go in. So once again, I tell my team twice that I'm on my way down bot. My goal is to get them to follow us so we can push with the immortal. I try to go for a full combo there. If... I would have landed it, she would have died, but I ended up missing because she teleported. Um, so that's really good. So right here, what I do is I want to get that hatred done, and then I want to be a little bit more aggressive. So you see I finish my hatred, and I try to go a little bit more aggressive. And watch the amount of damage. We just blow people apart at this point. I even missed my Q. It's just my W getting a huge burst of 400 damage, uh, and then also an auto attack right afterwards with the extra strafe damage. Um, so really, really good, or not strafe, but uh, vault damage. So now we're just focusing on the actual thing, but if I wanted to ever go for like the uh, someone here, I just pop my ult and I'm just melting people down as well as dealing with the core. So I, I would say that this could be the new BOE build. It's very strong. I even spent the majority of the game trying to go for the, the immortal and I still was able to keep up with our, our highest damage dealer. Um, Hanzo is spending a lot of the times just attacking tanks, so he kind of got his damage a little inflated. Same thing with Flaming, but I attacked what needed to get attacked, and we won every Immortal, and I also killed things before they could get healing. So if you notice something, while they did a lot more damage, their, their enemies would die in very quick bursts um where they didn't get time to actually get healed where ours wouldn't die as fast hanzo and leaming are a lot of poke that was easy to heal up so that's the other thing too this build's super bursty so the only variant that i'm really making is um instead of of the the stun ult i'm going with this for a little bit more sustained damage a little bit more aoe um and then also seething hatred level 20 
Um, most likely you just upgrade strafe. The upgraded strafe is really good. It makes it to where it pierces everyone and everything. Um, also, I believe it increases the range. Um, I would need to rewind to be able to see what it is. But yeah, that's what I would upgrade is just the strafe. Let me know what you guys think about this build. Uh, again, it's still mainly for BOE, but you could certainly run this build on like Hanamura, where you don't need a lot of extra wave clear. The camps are also very important on that map, and that would increase your ability to do camps as well. You can see I didn't actually finishing the finish the puncturing arrow quest, and I don't really expect a lot of people to finish it, uh, unless you're just like chasing around the enemies the whole time. I was focused more on the objectives, and it definitely paid off this game. So just keep that in mind. With all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos.